New Metal is not coming back. Yeah. But surely we... Mm. No, you're right. Time to launch the EA app and take all my cares away. I do not have any nostalgia. I still listen to it. Unironically. Because there's still a lot of... There. It's interesting because production is still kind of crusty in the aughts. Like the early aughts. Um... I guess, uh, I don't know, it was kind of like, it was still kind of early days for digital production. The War of Loudness was still going on. So like, new metal has a sound to it. Studio new metal. That is dumb and bad. But uh, finding, finding that ridiculous sound is like kind of hard to do otherwise. Like Three Teeth, I think is uh, a more modern band I found that's kind of like adjacent. I think Scott will be back in 2030, mark my words. They're marked. They've been taken down. They've been written in the ledger. Alright, let's play, let's play Dead Space. How's it going in Dead Space? Uh, let's see. Oh, not badly. Well, that's right. I'm using the stupid ripper. Oh, that's right. I just went into a zero-g area that had a lot of babies in it. Zero gravity. Yeah. Warning. Nope. Please attach All right. Modules. Simple. Thank you very much for the cheer, Nox. Have a good night yourself. Yeah, I've already started. I'm, uh... What, what chapter am I at? Chapter 3. So I'm not super far. Also not the beginning of the game, though. Yeah, I need to... Let me put my headphones back on. Do you like the newer Zero-G editions? I do not remember with detail what Zero-G was like in Dead Space 1. Because it feels the same to me, but that's probably because I'm remembering it from 2? Is that who's doing that? Oh, only walking with directed jumps to other walking. Ah, okay. There you are. I still have a lot of ammo, but... Okay, yeah, I didn't remember that. I mean, this is cooler. This is way cooler than just, like, pointing and clicking and letting the game do the work. It's not the Isaac way. Honest, hard-working Isaac Clark. Man's man. Working man. You have to like slow it down first. Yeah, strong American name. Well, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I suppose so. Just warning you though. Now that I've said it, who's gonna be the first? Who's gonna get the, uh, who's gonna get the crown? 
It's actually pretty... The way that they handle turning and aiming is pretty good. I don't think there is a button... <clears throat> I don't think there's a button to rotate you. But it doesn't seem to be that big of a problem. Jumped on my ass. God damn, man. Oh, shucks. I shouldn't have been burning all that ammo. There's these explosive barrels in here. I'm just so thrilled that games look this good. This and Callisto Protocol. I need to... I actually really need to try Cyberpunk with uh, DLSS 3. Oh, I also need to change my title. There we go. All right, nobody did it. I'm a die lit was, was the closest. All right, well, fun fact, everyone. I, what is it? I have to get this right, otherwise, otherwise it's gonna be really bad. Oh wait, Q and E when not aiming. Oh, you can rotate, okay. I thought they were just relying on like, your your orientation being whatever it is, and then you land. Anyway, that's awesome. Uh, -huh. Isaac's name. It's a reference to uh, Isaac Asimov and Arthur C. Clarke, right? Which I thought was also cool that his name was just a like even his name is just a, a combination of science fiction tropes. He's kind of like he is a protagonist. Um. So I always appreciated that. I thought I thought the styling and the intentional curation around Isaac Clarke as a character and his role as a, a protagonist avatar was just super well done in Dead Space 1. Oh man, when you're rotating the little thrusters on the back, like angle up and down to make your... That's so sick. To, like, explain the sort of vectored thrust. Oh. What's the other booster? There's, like, the one on the shoulder. I guess it's just the one, yeah. And then it would rotate you around your center of gravity. Like how he kind of shrugs up his shoulder, too. People like it in the remake, but I don't like the more lies or the more lines Isaac has in the remake. Yeah, I think I still I still prefer Silent Isaac. But there's still long sections like this where he's not talking. You know, it's not it's not God of War. He's not constantly chattering with like a friend that's right there. Um so there's still quite a bit of Isaac being quiet and solving problems. But yeah, I agree. Oh, okay. I don't know what I expected. But yeah, the fact that it got a remake, the fact that apparently the remake's doing well. Hopefully, EA seems like they're way more tolerant of games that don't earn one billion dollars these days. So if this means that it can be a property, or have another shot at, at life, that's great. Miss Isaac Silver lo Fox look from the old games. Well, he didn't start gray, did he? He got that way because of the stress and PTSD of nearly dying a million times. I didn't think he was silver in Dead Space 1. I remember like gray streaks showing up in Dead Space 2 and then yeah, he was like 
I need stasis. And yeah, he was all he was all creeped out, too scared. I thought there'd be like a stasis recharge unit on the wall or something, but just oh, oh. Uh... All right. I wonder if they remake two and pretend three never happened. I think there's a lot that still works in three. It's still a super well-made game. I think though that if you like, if you redid the ammo system and the gun and upgrade system, I think I think in a especially in a remake situation, a lot of that game is still super salvageable. Exactly what you want to hear in this situation. Centrifuge activated. Re establishing balance with tectonic load. God, that's awesome. Ugh, Christ, imagine if that shit happened. Sorry, I'm on duty, Mr. Freeman. Fox, I thought you were going to sleep. What is your favorite game of the last decade? Probably Breath of the Wild. I can't float. Oh, I should have been moving a lot earlier. Okay, never mind. There was oxygen right here. Yeah, that's right. Quick nap. You're right. Quick little, quick little sesh. Bounce back. Ready for more Twitch watching? Centrifuges back online. All that's left is Whoop. right? Ready when you are. Oh, great. It's gonna be like that. Immune to stasis. Too big. Alright, nope. Didn't want to run. That's fine. We got a guy coming. Sklorsh. Shit, man. Uh, oxygen. Right. Must run where only the gamers dare. Acha! Oh, there's nothing over here. <laughs> Damn it. Oh god. Looks so good. It's weird, too, because I remember all those moments, too, in Dead Space 1 of, like, taking an elevator and being like, Oh, you can see the texture on his suit. I saw that dude, but I'm still going to run in here. I'll come back out and kill his ass. Maybe? On easier difficulties, it's pretty easy to be, like, item positive when you're in combat, but I don't know about this. I don't know about hard. I don't know if it's worth losing the ammo to kill him. Also, in some circumstances, can't enemies follow you through vents and stuff? Uh, oh yeah, you! You, this guy.
This is another potentially instant death, isn't it? <laughs> I guess we'll never know. I remember that being like a blood pressure go up moment playing on impossible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ripper blades. I don't want them. I don't think I've killed a single thing with the ripper yet. Oh yeah, this fucking room again. Oh! No! Oh, hey! Hey! Alright, who wants a spike? Who wants it? think that someone will never make an animated series of Dead Space 3. Probably not of Dead Space 3, specifically the game, but there was an animated Dead Space movie. I remember it not being bad, but not also being, like, exceptional. Just kind of felt like it was made because somebody wanted it made. Wasn't there? Yeah, there was, a, there was an animated Dead Space thing. I don't know if it was a mo- it might have been like a 40 minute thing. Hold on. Maybe I'm wrong. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Dead Space Downfall. Yeah, barely animated. It, it was like- it was budget animation for the mid-aughts, so not- not great. Basically, like one chop above a motion comic kind of situation. It's a holy relic. This is what created us. Can anyone hear me? Yeah, there was a lot of Dead Space tie-in media. Transmedia was kind of the, the buzzword at the time. The Wii game was pretty good. Uh, and it even looks like a DVD. two animated movies and a live action from 1991. I don't think I've seen the 1991 live action Dead Space movie. I'll keep an eye out for it. One of the characters, tying characters, appear in Dead Space 2? That sounds right. I don't know. It was an early attempt to, like, explore connectedness in media, which is, I guess, is kind of interesting. 2008, right? Marvel was just, like, they had just put out Iron Man? So there was, like, the concept of doing that stuff. It had been around for a while. I remember uh, Dragon Age got, like, books and comics and stuff? I think, as, as kind of like I was talking about in Gen 7, with, er with companies realizing how expensive these products were going to be to make, I think the idea was then that if you're going to invest all this money <clears throat> into making a game, first of all, it shouldn't be somebody else's property. That's just stupid. Um, why would you spend all that money making a big game and then pay somebody else for the right to make it? So then you had you had this explosion of all these new IP that was awesome because every company wanted to own the thing. And then companies like EA, they were like, well, if we're putting all this effort into making something, why don't we make it? Why don't we like make products for it in every medium? Transmedia. Yeah, we, get, we did get the Doom books. That's true. Wait, it's got the guy from Breaking Bad in it. Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston's in a 1991 Dead Space movie?
Did you... Hmm. You certain you didn't imagine this? I mean, I guess maybe. Pull up IMDb again. 1991 Dead Space movie actually does exist. Perfect. Dead Space. It's a sick logo. Research lab on the planet Fabon. Fabon. We don't have sufficient reason to terminate the experiment. Are you telling me this is a false alarm? It is not a monster. What the hell do you call it? This fucking rules. Look at your monster. He's a fool if he thinks he can stop. Oh man. Those hallways, those lights. I did. Yeah, there he is. There's our guy. Dang it. There we go. There's our guy. That's Hal. Fuck yeah. Fuck yes. If yeah, it worked. Talking about Shut up. It worked for James Cameron. It can work for me. Yeah, the, the realm, like the... There was this fun little window of like low-budget sci-fi horror in like mid-80s to mid-90s. There's some fun movies in there. It looks like that's like straight up in the... In that vein. Like hardware. Oh yeah, it's not the same IP. Dead Space is a term that existed before the game. Bring to the bench. Oh, do you have to like go to that gun? Also, how do you, wait a minute. Okay, there we go. I'm going to keep the rifle for now just because it's my only AoE. Until I get the line gun. I feel like that's going to be where, where the magic happens. Heat accumulator? Mmm. Although you don't need to buy that until you've already capped out what's in your, uh, what's in your current tree, right? Because there's still stuff to upgrade? Is there a bench around here? M for map. There was a bench somewhere close to where I am, but I think it's through space now. Yeah. Okay. Jason X survival ho space horror game. I mean, I guess if they make a... They need to make a space station map for Dead by Daylight. And then you're basically there. Yeah, General Sweet Pants. If you want to send it to me, that's great. I mean, I'm, I'm confident I'll be able to track it down, but yeah. I am interested in watching it. I cracked the secure files. The UC was here for more than just the mining claim, huh? What do you mean? Movie looks pretty dank. After the miners dug up some artifacts. Something alien. That's oh. impossible. But it would explain why Aegis 7 is meant to be off limits, right? Earth Gus orders. When the miners found the artifact, they reported hallucinations, paranoia, suicides. But the Ishimura brought this marker on board anyway. But that was the plan. Wait. The marker. Okay, back up. Where's yeah, you better get used to that. Cargo. Oh, oh, I thought, thought maybe it was going to auto chop me. I don't know why I'm in here. I just feel like doing it. Oh, 
Shit, shit. Eh. All right. I've struck a personal blow to James Cameron's film empire by stopping these fans. Damn, video game graphics so good. What's up, Turbid? How are you doing? fuck is going on down there? Jesus. Yeah, someone's got to take a take a look at that. Oh no. No, no, no. Maybe I just don't pick it up. Ah, uh, man. All right. Give me that thing. The useless thing. Sold 70 copies of your book? Fuck yes, dude. It's seventy dollars. What are you gonna spend that money on? Your first check as a uh, published author. Seventeen copies. What did I say? The external hard drive. Oh yeah, yeah. Seventy. Oh, never mind. Okay. Well, almost. You'll you'll sell seventy one day, and then you'll sell seven hundred, and then you'll sell seven thousand. Just got my sixty five inch QLED TV and can safely report the stream is crisp as fuck. Really. And I think you put it on a nice TV like that and you'd be able to see all the twitch twitch gooiness. Yeah, this place is all scorned up. For sure. During scorn levels of gack and gunk. Guts. I will say for all the dead space like for dead space aesthetic, and for how hellish they try to make all the monsters, they're very not sexual. Um there's very little like Vaginal or or phallic imagery, yonic or phallic, if I were to use the smart words, which is odd. Most most horror, especially video game sci-fi horror. Speaking of scorn, they can't wait to rub teethy vagina all over you. So interesting restraint, really. Engineering log. <laughs> Sexy nurses, and necro zombies. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I can't raise anyone on Riglink. I think my team is gone. I found the Kinesis module that someone used to bust the centrifuge. Burned out. Who would sabotage the Ishimura at a time like this? I'll report to the bridge. If anyone's left. And then I'm finding Elizabeth and getting us the hell off this ship. It's like if... God, if Dead Space were made by Bioware at the time, yeah. The monsters would have like giant sexy oily tits. And they'd be, like, breasting boobily towards you. Remember, a new live-action Dead Space movie was coming out. Well, you know, I would say that I'm not sure what you're talking about, but you've been- you've already been one for one on Dead Space movies, so I'm a little afraid to, uh, to boldly shoot down that claim. But I haven't heard of one. Uh... Yeah, he's confused. I'd probably react that way if somebody rounded the corner and shined a light in my face, too. Oh, I found a bench. I'm 
Wait, hold on. We're talking about we're talking talking about foreskins. Just finished Silent Hill through that game is only penis and vagina monsters. Yeah. Surgeon, yes. Uh yeah, Silent Hill does work in sexual themes, but those are present in the actual story too, and can definitely be related to psychological issues of the characters themselves, versus just sex being thrown into to games as as more of a marketing and appealing point. I'm I'm saying even for like a game in the mid aughts, I think it's shocking how well designed and restrained sexually that Dead Space is. Not that I mind it, I'm just saying like games at the time were packed full of uh, teen boy fan service. Your Silent Hill podcast I still listen to. Real Oh, the 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 one with Bruce. We're going to be we're going to be casting again pretty soon here. I'm excited for that. We should uh I think sometime this month. Oh, stasis size. I want to keep it like so here, the idea is that we do the podcast, and that goes up everywhere, and then there's like a bonus podcast that's a Patreon level reward. Um, Apple still has them up. Yeah, it should be. Wait a minute. Is that feed not the same one that I'm? Try not to get eaten by a monster or anything. Okay. Thanks, Barney. Try my best. Uh, is that not getting updated with modern Inside Games episodes? It should be all be in the same feed. Draper, thank you for the cheer. I have tried out Signalis. It's amazing. If you like PS1 era survival horrors, for sure go to it. Go to it and get it. Oh, the Funhouse Dude Soups. I see. Got it. Got it. Got it. You're talking about the, yeah, the guy who flipped out about Silent Hill being about <laughs> circumcision. Yes. I understand now. Yeah, no worries. Trash Bandico. Bandicoot. I was I was already thinking about modern stuff, so that's where my head was at. Modern podcasting. But yeah, excited to chat games with Bruce. And then like, so the the gaming podcast will be the one that goes out for everybody. The like side life discussion pop media cast will be the Patreon one. I just I don't know. I have a weird. I feel this weird internal fixation on- Oh! Oh! This is what I need the flamethrower for! Ah! 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 I didn't- I didn't equip it. There's one coming! Wait, did I? No, I didn't. Alright. Alright, come out! He slapped me! Ah! This <laughs> shit! No, no! Go! Stop it! Stop jumping! No! Stop it! Can I get him? No! Uh. God damn, okay. Now I gotta go hit this guy. Hey! Not cool. Dick! Oh, anyway. Yeah, Otter, I, I feel like there's just this weird trend where like, oh, oh, oh. Like gaming brands or gaming people come together, but then when they do podcasts, they don't really talk about games much. Clearance confirmed. And I feel like even, even brands that start as gaming media just never stay there. Ah! It's just a weird thing to me. How quickly people get over like making gaming media after like maybe one year of doing it, which is the coolest thing to do, by the way. The coolest thing. Everyone's like, nah, let's just do something else. Let's make TV or something. I'm just like, what? But there's so many more video games. They haven't stopped making them and they're still good. Yeah, I guess once it becomes your job, not a lot of people can seem to be able to be cool with... Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, these guys pop and all their babies come out, right?
Okay, so it is two units of life, so I might as well use this one too then. There's never there's never a free heal in this game, is there? Right? Am I remembering that correctly? Like there's never a time when you just get healed up for for free? Maybe when you upgrade? If I got paid to play and talk about games, I'd do that forever. Right? 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 Wouldn't you? Wouldn't anyone? I don't know. I'm just baffled. Multiple times in my life. See multiple people get there and like within within a month, they're just like, nah. I want something else that's more difficult and unattainable. Oh, upgrading your rig gives you a fill up. Okay. I thought there was like one and only one loophole where you could get... I re that's right. So on impossible... I would wait to upgrade my rig health until I'd taken damage. To like, to maximize that, but it, it's, this isn't so bad. I wonder if they changed the difficulty at all. Or maybe I'm just really good at video games. I have died once already though, so. I'm not sure, oh, Viva the La Dirt League. I do skirt skits on working in retail and gaming stuff. Ah, sounds cool. No, I'm not familiar. Uh. I might have seen their sketches on on the internet or something. I never could really tell how, like, how much you have to aim your, your stasis, or your kinesis grab. Damn it, that blew up both of them. Oh! God, shit. Oh, I'm out. That little ball of spit just, like, materialized through the flames. Hey, alright. Where am I? How far back am I? Well, death number two, I guess. Oh, geez, this is pretty far back. General, is that a- is that hot little YouTube link to what I think it is? Hold on, let me click on this. Oh, hold on. This, I don't know about this. I don't know about this one, hold on. I feel like this is fake. Mm. There's this thing I've noticed on YouTube a lot where people will just try to edit together a movie trailer and then, yeah, it's a fan-made trailer, but they definitely try to label it and make it look in all ways like... Like the... a trailer for a real thing. There's like tons of fake Spider-Man trailers and stuff. Oh, this... this was legitimately like a fan-made trailer? I got yo... I need a spoon. <coughs> oh, okay, it was done 9 to 10 years ago. And 
not see which way to go if you did not yeah, that's, that's a good cosplay <laughs> you only need one hallway to make a movie. One hallway and three rooms. Maybe four. Yeah, for a fan made trailer, I'm actually kind of. In, the audio mixing was really good. All the sounds of the monster screaming. Also, he hasn't talked. First person shot with a close sound of breathing. Like, there's some fun, st there's a lot of fun stuff going on in here. It's also kind of an exploration of how could you make a movie with a silent protagonist? Or like a movie that is just recreations of game scenes. So yeah, it was more like a fan film than a movie trailer. Still pretty cool. Definitely always fun to see like just fans and talented people put something out because they're just like, this is fucking cool. Love it when like the the great work of one team inspires the creativity and output of another one. Yeah, EA was really on some shit back then, huh? Talking about that Dead Space 2 marketing campaign. Your mom hates Dead Space. Uh. Man. That's one of those things that, like... <coughs> Excuse me. Working on a team can be a real hell of a thing. You can get way more done on a team... <laughs> Everybody pitching in, Team Lift can make these amazing products uh, with breathtaking levels of execution from any every corner of, of, of skills. Sometimes somebody makes a weird call and it affects everything, but that's just part of working on a team. So yeah, you make Dead Space 2 and then EA Marketing is like, Your mom would want to play Dead Space. Ugh. Clearing log. My last log. Temple reporting. <laughs> I can't raise anyone on Ricklink. I think my team is gone. I found the Kinesis module. Yeah, someone's got a crap in the brownies. Burned out. I sometimes I wonder about that stuff of like. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to project too much, and I don't want to like. And then I'm finding Elizabeth. I don't want to imply. Uh, I don't want to imply antagonism where there is none. So I'm just going to like put it up like this. If I like, let's say I worked at Naughty Dog and I was a an, an art lead or, well, lead that's awfully, it's a little, uh, a little self aggrandizing. Let's just say that I worked in tech or whatever. I was like a tools engineer or whatever, made graphics. And I was like, man, I hope the blast was part two is good. It looks good. It looks like it's going on pretty good. And then I play it and it's just like, 
It feels like one team, one department had like so much more of the focus. I'm just like, man, why did they choose to highlight that out of everything? Out of all the good work in there, that's the thing that they thought was like the most important. Oh, that must be a bummer too. When you're like, if you you or your team on a game to, a game project, you kill yourself, like making the figuratively, you put in a lot of work to make like a really efficient engine, or give give the art team some some bananas good lighting effects. And then you play the game and you're like, that's how you chose to use them, though? I wonder how much that goes on. Because you can never say that. Like, you can never go to the internet and be like, man, fuck the, fuck the light, light riggers. Uh, but I wonder how much that's... Like, surely that stuff gets talked around internally all the time. Oh, yeah, a loud room. I don't think I'm supposed to be in here. Yeah, so let's take the elevator down. Tegze, thank you very much for the cheer. Reminding me that my child needs me. My child can fend for itself. Maybe you should have a little more faith in my child. Oh, you actually prefer close to protocol, huh? There, I really liked Callisto protocol. up with this. Hello, host dad. Mm. You made a mistake shaving your butt hair. Now when I walk, it feels really uncomfortable. Do your like cheeks bond together? They're, they're not, there's no separator in there anymore? Did they like kind of, because skin can kind of do that. It can kind of like stick to itself. I've always wondered about that. Light awake at night, tossing and turning. Oh yeah, when it starts growing back, that's gonna be itchy. Constantly like wiggling back and forth. Do you wish you could do the like dog dog butt scoot right now? I bet you do. Maybe you should do it. You only live once, all right? I'm giving you permission. Maybe like put down a towel, but like like spread and then lower yourself and then just like hands out in front of you, legs legs splayed in front, just scoot. Actually, no, wait, we're civilized. Just just floss through your just floss. Just give yourself a little crotch floss with a towel. Ah! <laughs> it got me again. Oh, he's fine. <laughs> there we go. Its base ignition is also really good. Which wasn't was ignition the Wii game? That was extraction. Which one was ignition? Story time. Great. My dog did that scoot on my garage's epoxy floor that has anti-slip additive like grit. Permanent skid marks. You can't like power wash it. Power wash it out? Or did that happen and then the epoxy coat went down? Doesn't come out. Wow. I guess it like stained the concrete or something? Oh. Well, that's fun. You get to just see that every day. You heard about a game called Iron Lung? I don't think I have. Farting feels a lot different with butt hair. Less resistant. Oh, I could see that, yeah. Again, I think it's that cold weld of your butt cheeks that... The air has to push through. Here I might have acted as a buffer. Yeah, it's like a reed. Ooh, 
Ooh, it explores Thassalophobia, much like Subnautica. Oof. I didn't get far enough in, uh, in Subnautica for that shit to kick in. So wait, Subnautica's like heavy on that stuff? There's like a ton of uh, lotus pods and stuff all over the place. Or no, wait. That's something else. Vesselophobia is like deep ocean fear, right? Fear of the deep. I ain't afraid of no deep dank. What? Cool. Explosive stomp. Warning. Planet fall imminent. Correct course immediately. Fearish. Hello. How have I been? Well, you know what? I've been good, but also I've had COVID. So there's that. So I've been, I've had the sniffles. Uh, Stephanie's got them too. But I'm pretty much over it at this point, even though I'm still testing positive. So it's like, I'm still just hanging out at home, playing games and trying to, trying to, trying to be kind to myself, I guess. Let's see here. Nope, wrong one. Dang it, I used... Uh, I think I used it. I had a big health pack, and I'm pretty sure I used it. Uh, Alright, whatever. Is there a... I almost want to turn off... Oh! Shit. I almost want to turn off, like, quick item use. I don't know if you can, though. I remember playing the original with my older brother and he never told me about the slow-mo ability. I always put it on the hardest difficulty when it was my turn. What, Dead Space? That's a pretty, uh... Pretty shifty, but pretty classic sibling move right there. Yeah, the quick item use was in the original. What bugged me then, and I think bugs me now, is that when you hit quick heal, it always picks the largest health pack. Which, all right, I get it. <laughs> if you're in a, a duress, if you're in a stressful situation, you probably want the most healing you can get. But still, ugh. A lot of times that uh, it would like way overheal. I'd have one segment of health missing, and I'd have a small health and a big one, and it would use the big one. And I'm just like, ugh. The problem is, it's like, it's the same button as using Kinesis. You just hit that when you're not aiming, and then you'll quick use health. So, I don't know. Sometimes I'll try to grab something real quick, and I just am not holding right click or left trigger or whatever the heck the thing was back in the day. If this game, like, this game's not as hard as I... It's not as hard as two... Also, I don't know. It's not super hard right now, so I'm not super worried about uh, running out of healing. I don't think one health pack is going to make the difference. You'd make up some BS that I'd believe in not using the button to slow things down. Oh, so would it get to like, what about the parts where you have to use it? Okay, there's a stasis barrel. Oh.
ignition chamber. That stasis barrel went. Engines ready. Please confirm ignition order. Yeah, two with the two with the environmental shit was the worst. Instant kill, chompers and doors, and QTE mini games that actually had pretty tight timing. The part where you hang upside down at the beginning, like kind of at the end of the first act. That sequence is real rough. Yeah, it's real easy to just whoops, you're dead. And Dead Space 2. Doesn't feel that easy this time. Yeah, 3 is the one that, that people weren't super fond of. Which, honestly, like, compared to other games at the time, wasn't that bad. It was just that there were some core mechanics that got compromised to allow for microtransactions. There was this, like, in-game resource economy that you could p put money into, real money. It was, it was still, like, even within the boundaries of being a monetization platform, was still quite good, I thought. Especially compared to other games at the time, which were far less meaningful in their game design. Far more transparent in their attempts to just trick you into thinking you're playing a game and get you to pay money. That looks awesome. Yeah, it was an action game instead of a horror game, that's for sure. I mean, it kind of opens with, like, rifles and Call of Duty men. So, I, and, it, and it was more focused on the bombast and the, the scripted actions and the set pieces and stuff. It settled down into, like, more of a Dead Spacey tone, but it never got back to something like this. So, yeah. Levels and dialogue were repetitive and tedious. Hmm. Yeah, I guess there's a lot of generic, smaller, derelict ships you go into in that game. Damn, so good. Yeah, I relied heavily on co-op. I mean, it was designed around co-op, so. But I, I don't know. Like, Dead Space 2 was really good. Um, and I guess it would be fun. Like, I'm I'm okay with them making more of a good game. But sometimes when it's... When it, like, just, just before I get too far down this, I wasn't super happy with Dead Space 3 either. But in retrospect, it wasn't as bad as I remembered. And also... God, that looks so good. And also, I'm just generally kind of okay with franchises iterating and changing, even to their structure. Becoming different genres entirely, I'm pretty down with that. Like, like a dragon turning into a JRPG is like, mm, that's what I want. I think Resident Evil has has gone on a journey over the course of its runtime. I think uh, Assassin's Creed also did a really good, really interesting job of morphing and becoming new things. Assassin's Creed, though, I don't know. Some It kind of felt after a while like it was chasing trends. I I prefer, like, games constantly try to be new things, and part of that, of course, is, I think, trying to stay relevant, stay what... like, continue to deliver what's popular. But I would much rather, and this is the biggest ask, that games under a franchise just become new things for the sake of being new. Ideally, the developers have a bunch of ideas, and then the franchise just refers more to, like, a philosophy of design. Or maybe, uh, some design tenets that games share. And then that's more like your Dragon Quest. Well, more like Final Fantasy. Those are a little more mechanically experimental. Persona, maybe? Those are still pretty rigidly turn-based, though. But yeah. Isaac, you did it. The that's the shit I love. When it's like, it's a new thing in a franchise, so you know it... You Hold on. I'll be quiet during the dialogue. Autopilot's taking us into geostationary orbit. Wait, you're flying us through the planet crack debris? That's what the asteroid defense system is for. But the ADS is offline. I've got the system readouts here. Hammond, the Ishimura is in rough shape. A couple of bad strikes could finish her off. Shit. Daniels, give me all the data you have. I'll try to adjust course. Isaac, you disable the tram lockdown from engineering. I'll open up the bridge station. Meet me there. We need to work on this together. Let's see here. Recommend changing into the infested suit for this next area. There's a point early when Isaac takes off his helmet and it's just chef's kiss. 
What, what about the infested helmet makes that more of a chef's kiss? But yeah, I can do that. Will Squeenix ever make a turn-based Final Fantasy with like Persona 5 combat? Hmm. I guess that's what Octopath Traveler is. Didn't... It's been a... Wait, did, there was like a... There were... They have made a couple of throwback turn-based games over the years. Pixel remasters there, I guess. As far as whether a new bud, a new big budget game, probably not. Like a new numbered Final Fantasy game. There's like in the 2010s, I would have said absolutely not. Maybe it's possible. Like if anyone's gonna do it, it'd probably be like Yoshi P. There has to be a producer that has clout. They can say, like, this is the kind of game I want to make and have <coughs> and get the money out of Square Enix and just ship it. So if like the only the only stars aligning there I can imagine is if 16 sells really well and then Yoshi P gets like a blank check to do whatever he wants with 17. And also for some reason what he wants is a turn based JRPG. Valkyrie Elysium was wasn't turn based though, right? played it a little bit. It was actually really interesting. Like the, the combat system in there seemed really cool. Oh. No, Isaac's having a bad time. Oh, Bravely Default. Yeah, I think that's maybe what I was thinking of. Bravely Default is a very turn-based game and it has a it has a uh a mechanic to it that kind of makes it a, a meta, like a hyper turn-based game. Because you have to plan like multiple turns in, in ahead in advance. That's the word. All right, infested suit. Are you interested in finer, final bar theater rhythm? I'd say so. Yeah, I'll play it. It's got Final Fantasy XIV characters in it. Oh, it's got a little skull on the side. It's so icky looking, though. Look at how icky it is. Am I bad enough, dude, to move this to storage? I am. Because I can use pulse ammo. Oh yeah, I'm absolutely going to play the Resident Evil 4 remake. You kidding me? Oh my god. I love that game. I was going to get Bravely Default on two on Steam, but didn't like the way they changed the character designs. Is it a direct sequel? Is it like the same characters? Because I was developing a fondness for Bravely Default, Bravely Default's cast. Although I didn't finish Bravely Default. I don't know. That was another game where just like the battles, even though there was like a, a mechanic to, to kind of juice you up and help you finish them faster. It was so slow, dude. The encounter rate in Bravely Default was a little ridiculous. Also like, I guess the biggest problem was that I kept running into enemies that had explicit weaknesses for spells I'd never found. And that was happening like 20 hours into the game. I never found a water spell, I guess, and everything was weak to water. And I'm like, what the f fuck, man? Something fe It feels like I missed something. I felt that way playing Bravely Default all the time in regards to like the game's battle system. It felt like it, it expected me to have tools I just didn't have. And again, I think I was playing on hard, so there's that. QTEs a thing of the past? Ah, man. I just finished Hi-Fi Rush, a game packed with QTEs. They were also in uh, God of War, Ragnarok, so they're still around. They're not as ubiquitous as they once were, though, I guess. Oh, 
Oh, four remake won't have QTEs. That's a that's kind of a bummer. Aw. Aw, Resident Evil 4's QTEs were cheeky as shit though. And they were mean. They were fun. Four had that kind of trolley. I mean, I guess that was Shinji Mikami. Same same director as Bayonetta. I think a lot about Bayonetta slapping the fuck out of you as soon as cutscenes end. Oh yeah, Ashley won't have a health bar. The night fight will just be a cutscene? Ugh. But it's gonna be extra sick, right? There's gonna be so much Zack Snydery, like there's gotta be like an in-engine would you while like Leon sees the knife, like go and like, cut some of his beautiful hair off or something. That's like level one though. Capcom is usually up here in terms of their their like cinematic action. <sighs> I'm just thinking about it. I'm thinking about Capcom cutscenes right now and I I'm so excited. So excited. Do you think they're gonna be like there's gonna there's gotta be more costumes for Leon, right? You think we're gonna get Since it's gonna be on PC, it's gonna be modded, which means we can get like beefcake Leon. I was a big fan of the like thong wearing Chris in Resident Evil 8. So <laughs> gay sex scene between Luis and Lu Leon. That's what's really happening in that cabin. When they block out all those windows. Smooching, big time smooching. Muff, That's the sound of them kissing. I'm gonna go use the restroom. I'll be right back before I get myself in trouble. I'm back. I have a the last donut qu flavored quest bar. The end of this is Krauser fight. Oh, is this the? Is this the rooftop fight? Yeah. Yeah. There was a video game there. I got those like, uh, I got those like fake chocolate crumblies on my desk. <sighs> yes, that movie was Resident Evil Vendetta, which is required when you want to see how cool Leon is. Sorry, I'm late. I took the stairs as he gets off his sick Harley or whatever. Think you mean Brendan Fraser, the one true mummy action star? No, I meant Nick Morton. That's played by Tom Cruise in 20... 18? 17? Is it the mummy? I love that in the same movie they have two dudes running in a circle shooting at each other. And it's so dumb, but also sick. Well, if they shoot higher, then they'll just like freaking... Mind game dodge. They'll just matrix dodge. You got to shoot low. But by the time you shoot, they're already gone. That's the problem when you're fighting a highly expertly trained super combat master. Chris Redfield. He has supernatural battle instincts because of his connection with the land. <laughs> or whatever the line was. Need more Native American gaming icons, though. And we got Nightwolf. We got the lead dude from uh, 2005 Prey. T Hawk, yeah. Julia and Tekken, I think. There's a. Uh, what is it, Kotal Khan from Mortal Kombat? Looking like a big Incan god. I'm like, I'm all right with that. That looks cool. Oh yeah. Prey, the movie, was pretty sick. Just realized there's a Prey video game that stars a Native American and a Prey movie that stars a Native American. Isaac, I'm looking at the ADS camp. They have nothing to do with each other. I'm gonna need your help. I am not losing the Ishimura, not now. Oh yeah. He's come at three. Don't bullshit us. Connor? Isn't that why you're really here? I don't remember his Native American name. Some off the books mining. But alien technology, yeah, that fits. And how does losing my team fit into this theory? Hey, knock this shit off. We're into the debris field. We get the ADS back together or it's over. Then meet me at the captain's nest. 
Daniels? Fine. But I'm going through the ship reports, Hammond. I'm getting some answers. Yeah. Like, Isaac had one line. It was, it was like, just trying to mediate things. Um, it's kind of reminding me... Ah. Raton and Hakaton. That's the one. Thank you. Uh, maybe it'll stick this time. I want to play Assassin's Creed 3 again. Anyway. Uh, I remember the dialogue of the original Dead Space was rad because the characters were, like, fighting with each other and suspecting each other. And Isaac didn't really talk, so... It kind of felt like you were just a kid in the room with, with, you know, mom and dad fighting, which has its own, like, stress and terror associated with it, its own feeling of helplessness. So I always really appreciated that. But, you know, again, the one line, he's just like, hey, stop it. Uh, I guess it makes him seem like he has a little more agency. What is that? What is that purple thing? Give me it. <laughs> Reminded me of my parents' divorce. Yeah, I, I thought it was like super well done. I don't I don't think any of that was on was an accident. Oh, I have to go over there. But I thought it was super cool that like they really make it so that you don't feel safe anywhere. Your your coworkers and friends are turning on each other and going insane. Your, the suit itself looks uncomfortable. You're you're walking around in guts. It's just stress in every corner. That's what I thought was so smart about it. Level two security clearance required. And it's layered, right? You have, like, social stress of, of the people on your team, like, fighting and accusing each other of shit. And then, like, it's a hallway and you're like, ah, alright, well, at least no one's arguing. And then this guy comes and says hi as a jump scare. So you get that, like, simmering tension of social relationships turning bad in a survival situation. And now this new horrible thing screaming at you. Oh, was that the worm, the guy that grabbed me from before? Hey, Lurker, thanks for the sub. Appreciate that. 18 months. Quite a while, quite a long time. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Gears of War 1 had such good dialogue. I agree. And actually, that, that didn't ever go away. But there was something really fun about the really subtle nature of, of Gears of 1, Gears of War's 1's dialogue and storytelling. They, were, they would very explicitly hint at, like, events... But it was still very understated, like, they never said anything that characters in that situation wouldn't say. It was just, like, kind of muted. Ooh. Very muted and conversational. You okay? At least containment and life support are holding. So far. This game is so good at setting up terror, but then not acting on that terror. Yeah, because you can only have so many climaxes. If you actually follow through on everything and like Isaac survives or beats these things that they're continually building up. And I think there is some follow through, like they'll establish monsters that you then get to kill. But they immediately get replaced by other bigger, more unsolvable problems. But, uh, but yeah, this game does a good job of not making you feel like you're safe because you did X. Or that now that you've done this thing, you're capable of doing this thing. Yeah, suspense works better when sometimes it's a letdown. Another thing that Silent Hill was really good at. I don't know if that's so much 100% intentional or just the maybe sometimes the rickiness of old games and their weird pacing, but... There were definitely moments when like Pyramid Head would just be there. Just walk out of a door and he's there. No music, no sting, no nothing. He's just there. Or like... Really intense sounds that lead to nothing. Level two security clearance required. Huh. 
Wait, where do you want me to go? Oh, right, right. Wait, you get sucked out in Dead Space 2? Were there like, were there a couple of sequences where that happened? It's been so long since I played Dead Space 2, but I played it a lot, so. Right, Red Pyramid Thing. Forgot about that. But yeah, I really appreciated how austere Gears 1 was. You know what's weird too is everybody joked about Gears 1 being a big, dumb, stupid game. Most because its characters were just wide. They were wide and thick and do-rag wearing. And it was kind of like a lot of games at the time were getting like edgy and dumb. But I thought there was such a... There was an elegance to Gears of War 1. Um... Especially its dialogue and characters. It was not nearly as, as in-your-face edgelordy as its characters and maybe even its world and enemies would make you think it is. Yeah. Warrior poety. Yeah, Blaze. Like, Gears 1 was very much like, these These are some sweet, but, but like... <sighs> this reminds me of the Expendables in a weird way. How they're like, there's the, the weirdly charming guys that have just been ground down by hard living. And yeah, everyone kind of gave it this do bro mentality. Which it never really had, even though the characters looked like they were that way. Uh, but uh, the characters got a lot more, like, cartoony, I feel like. <clears throat> Very more like, I'm just going to say out loud what my character's all about right now. Instead of be like a moody, a moody, whispery little guy over the course of like five levels. Really like the lore, not just dumb monsters. They actually have a reason to fight. Yeah. Yeah, I agree too. I think the first game op like I also like that the first game like it opened with Phoenix in jail and getting busted out and stuff, and they reference it and the, like the trials and stuff when they walk through that area in the first game. I remember, uh, but they don't like. That's it. Uh, it. There's not a lot of like dangling statements and stuff, which I really appreciated. No, they they they, they like literally went back and and touched on all that stuff later. I kind of hoped that all the Gears games were going to be that floaty and, like, non-specific. But then, yeah. Then the dialogue. Like, like, like most things, it's just like, no, nah, that's, that's too subtle. You need to just have people say how they feel so that everyone walks away from the focus test feeling like they understand. No, no, keep that wrong. Oh, I see. What is that? The one that attacked me. I meant it's a trap in here. Should be a little like spray whenever he's talking. I'm not seeing things, right? That's Chen. He can't help him, Hammond. He's. You're right. I should. The hell with it. Escape pod 47 launched. I worked with him for years. Johnston, too. At least she was spared becoming a monster. We're gonna fix this, Hammond. For them. Yeah. Come on. The ADS cannons. I can hold this position for a while. Is it turret time? More asteroids come through the roof. Oh, the helmet. The head's in there. It's not just an empty helmet. All right. Well, that's comforting for some reason. Mid to late 2000s was great for story games. Oosh. So there, I have to disagree. Um, there were some good well, exceptions. The systems aren't doing much. We but there weren't a whole lot of other examples. I need to rewire the junction boxes, but we get the ADS cannons back. Good. Well, let me revise. It was definitely a step up. I don't know about any illegal mining or the Compared to what came before, yeah. Look, Hammond, but nothing that I would like consider in the realm of see, like see. the the pinnacle examples. Good, that's kind of where it landed. Shit like that's above my pay grade. Look, we can get into it later. You'll need a way down to those junction boxes. You can turn the atrium elevators back. Up. F Life Two. It didn't really have a lot of writing. I mean, there was there a ton, a lot of good effort invested in the like world design and stuff. I guess to think about like the actual dialogue, that was pretty good. Just in case. Oh. 
I've been watching the stream a lot lately. Still love to come by. Much love. Well, Remarian, thank you for saying hi. Something big. Watch your back. Do you enjoy GTA 4's story? Uh, I liked some scenes. Well, what was the story? Like, it was a pretty generic and pretty unbelievable, like, doing favors for the right people and, and becoming a crime overlord kind of person. Uh, 4 was, to me, almost like a like a higher resolution version of 3's story, which is just... It, it didn't amount to much in the end. There was no there was no conclusion, really. Remember, you need to reactivate. Not that I could remember. How did 4 end? Oh, I think you, like, find the people that your brother or girlfriend died. Huh. Maybe I need to play it again. Oh, I see. I think I lost my four save file reinstalling Windows today. Four? Which four? That sounds scary. Oh, GTA 4. Oh, God. Oof. I'm sorry to hear that. Because, yeah. I can't imagine that that's easy to, uh, to, po to copy around. I, uh, I want to replay 4 again, but I, uh, I'm a little scared. It's going to take probably like a good evening to get it working and, and get it running in the appropriate fashion. Cody, oh, since you've been playing it again, I'm curious. Is there, uh, is there like a version revert or is there an ability to restore the game's like launch soundtrack? Warning. Multiple security protocols have been corrupted. Some areas may be inaccessible. Recommendation. Acquire department rig permissions and compile master security override at this console. Seems like a lot to do. Isaac, you going? Just There's some mods to do that. Otherwise, it's one click to install the game. Okay. I, I remember there being a time when you had to like strip out games for Windows Live and do a couple of other things. But I thought Rockstar had actually patched the game since then, but I know that, that they've also lost the rights to some music, so there's probably going to be a weird intersection where I have to bring some of that junk back to restore the version of the game to something that both runs on Windows, doesn't crash all the time, and uh, still has the full soundtrack. What if I want the achievement points, though? What if I want to get them points? I don't think Games for Windows Live even works in Legacy. Like, I don't think it works at all in anything, right? It's completely obsoleted at this point. How did I get this suit? Uh, I have the version of the game from EA Play, which I guess is the ultra, ultimate super spangled angle version. And it came with DLC. Wonder if it lists it here. Yeah. EA, wait. EA Play Pro Edition. Three unique suits, two texture, suit textures, and an andenized suit. 10% discount on digital purchases. The modern Xbox Xbox app recognizes GTA 4, but no achievements. I Oh yes. I thought you fought something big here. Oh, I have no stasis. Stasis on the wall or anything? I don't see it. I can see it on the monitor. There's a gap in its armor. Shoot it in the back. Yeah. In the back, huh?
Shoot it in the back, huh? Damn it. God damn it. Ah. Yeah, I remember the deal just being like you had to stasis those dudes and run around the back, but what do you do without stasis? I thought you would recover one use of stasis for exactly these situations. Perhaps there's another mechanic to exploit. Perhaps. I don't really see anything to throw around, but. Security request retrieved. Security is coming! We've been boarded! I repeat, the ship has been boarded! We are under attack! They've killed most of the deck staff. Where the hell is Steve Benson? We need security back up now! Guns are clear, but we can. What in God's name is that? Yeah, I could go to the store. Level three security clearance required. Hazardous anomaly detected. Quarantine activated. Ah! Oh, right. Uh, yeah, I got it. So can he just gallop at you and punch you when he wants? Oh, there's a hole there. Ow. Hey, OG, this was a bad idea. All right. I got cut on the hole. Again. Yeah, I'm frustrated too. Felt weird. Also, he's got a little vagina on his face. He's got a little vagina face there. A little bit. Well, maybe not. No, well, from a particular angle. From a particular angle. A little bit. Now, eh. Take it or leave it. Oh, thank you for the sub, host. Hey, you don't gotta thank me for interactions. That's what Twitch is all about. Clearance confirmed. Love this stuff. Whatever the cost. God's sakes, Ben, listen to yourself. The Ishimura's in crisis, you've cut us off. 
By Maritime Law Article 5469, I, Dr. Terence Kine, hereby declare Captain Benjamin Matthias unfit for duty. Heretic! Hold him! Ben, you're, you're not yourself. Let me help you. Traitors, get your hands off me! This is my ship! I'm gonna bite you to prove how sane I am. You... Ben... You saw I was trying to help him. Doctor, you... You just killed the captain. We have to take you in. Can't. But the others from the church get a hold of me. Stop! Remarian, thank you very much for the sub. Also, hey, I freely admit here that the, there aren't many vaginas in Dead Space. I said it was odd. The lack of vaginas was odd. That's what I said. Oh, dude, a dot. Oh, dude. Oh, oh. We're on easy street now. I just gotta shoot everything once and then kick back and let the game beat itself. Easy peasy. Anyway, I deserve credit for, uh, for uh, accurately recognizing that this is not vaginally packed. Atrium elevators are now online. I did that. That was me. There isn't even a lot of dick. Again, it's just a very asexual game. It's more about just general body horror. Mutilation and transformation. In an era where games were either literally marketing directly to teen dudes or thought to be marketing to teen dudes. They could have had vaginas everywhere and they chose not to. Again, I'm just saying. We have to appreciate this when it happens. We have to celebrate the restraint. Yeah, not even a titty demon. This game might have zero titties on the on the enemies. Do necromorphs even have a gender? No. If gender is a construct, I think they have no concept of it. Therefore, it doesn't exist. Isaac, I'm reading electrical hazards on the floor ahead of you. 60-year-old deck plane doesn't play well with power surges. Watch your step. Hmm. Their gender is whole. Waffles, you spelt it W-H-O-L-E. But I also think it's funny if it's H-O-L-E. My pronouns are whole. Whole's a whole. Hmm? Make it. Any port in a storm, am I right? Hey. <clears throat> That's something to think about. The ship is 60 years old. Think about a 60 year old car in space. Isn't the International Space Station like... It's like 40 years old. 50. It's getting there. 
Just falling apart? Well, theoretically, stuff doesn't entropy in space. Like it does in atmosphere or in a world with, like, bacteria and everything. Although if there's people using it every day, that's kind of where all the wear and tear would come from. Tiny debris would do consistent damage. If it's in a place that has debris, yeah. If you're, like, out in... I guess it's cracking a planet, so yeah, there would be a lot of debris. Damage over time, damage over time, damage over time. Ah! Shit! Oh. Oh, wait, yeah, I thought he killed me already. <clears throat> damage over time, damage over time, damage over time! There you go! Open the door! There we go. Ah! Damn it! Bad cat! Bad! Hey, verbose toast. Thank you for the sub. Hell yeah, Rads. You started watching Planet Tests? That show rocks. And yeah, the idea of planetary debris is an interesting one. Probably one we're going to run into, and we'll probably see issues with that in our lifetimes. What the hell's on your suit? It's the infected suit, so I got a little skull poking out. And it's all messed up. Somebody wanted me to use it for a cutscene in which Isaac takes his helmet off. Because your head comes off with it. So, I have to admit, that was a pretty, pretty good recommendation. Contact beam doesn't really do much, does it? Continuous lethal beam. Oh, I thought it was like the force gun. Never mind. I don't know that I use this much. Yeah, Neo, right? This game looks looks so good. I thought I thought like Callisto Protocol couldn't be topped. And in some ways I think Callisto Protocol is probably the better looking game. I have to disclose that it, like it ran really well on my machine and also I have expensive parts and all that stuff. But still. Uh, yeah, I, uh, eh, I'm, uh, I'm impressed. I did not think the remake was going to look this good, so I'm spoiled. Two really good science fiction fantasy games, or uh, science, science fiction horror games that both look incredible and are just packed to the gills with, like, James Cameron sci-fi horror lighting. Planet Test is a solid anime. It's the kind of slow and thoughtful anime that makes me feel smug and clever. Yeah, the only the only downside is there's parts of the show that aren't that way. It's like it gets there's some like anime hijinks that happen that kind of like drag the middle, I think. But yes, apart from that, it honestly kind of reminded me by the end it was like, it felt kind of Kojima y. Um, not in like it wasn't like goofy meta trolley, but more it's like very realistic examination of a very near future problem, and that that's also connected to some pr pretty like deep philosophical things that the human race is going to have to figure out. So the the question of like, should all should all Earth-faring humans benefit in the resources gained from outer space? You know, does that belong to the corporation that gets there? Does it belong to the nation that houses the corporation that gets there? Um, if SpaceX gets to Mars, we're gonna have to pass laws about this because they don't just get it; they don't get the whole planet. Um, 
but certainly that's kind of the idea behind the space race is that the resources of space need to be locked down by the right party early but yeah the idea that uh the idea that there can be a runaway condition where the the nations of the planet that do not have and will realistically never have in the near future the ability to go to space are they just locked to whatever like they'll just be locked to earth consigned to whatever whatever they get here that's not really fair luckily right now there's not a a wealth of of resources and potential waiting in space so it's not a pressing issue yet. Just got nothing. Power diverted from mining administration network. That's one. We still need more power. Couple more systems should do it. I heard that. Damn it. Sounds cool. Can't hate on how cool it sounds. Yeah, yeah. Gundam definitely covers these topics topics too, uh, or at least it's starting to, which I think is super cool. I didn't know Gundam got that hard. Oh man, there were blades here the whole time. Let's say a country gets to Mars, how would you even enforce a law? The country can just say no. That's true, yeah. I mean, yeah, you'd have colonies that want independence, which is kind of, yeah. That is, that is for certain the, the core of everything, Gundam. Committing some light war crimes to gain independence? Ow. Smart. I just want to jack off on Mars. Thanks for thanks for saying what we were all thinking, Dimmy. Alright, I just wanted to max out damage. As fast as possible. Orgasm more slowly. We need relativistic travel so that I can I can nut for like 40 years. This one, and it turns out in real time, that was like, somebody lived and died and like wrote, a, wrote symphonies and changed the course of the human experience while I like squirted into a toilet. Hurtling, <laughs> hurtling away from earth. Not right when the cryo freezes. <laughs> so I'm in the tube and it's like Spider-Man webbing in slow motion. Remember I'm about to arrive at my destination. They're like, they have to put down a, a little like rag or something. Oh, oh, that's right. I left you out there, didn't I? <laughs> You'll nut farther with lower gravity. It's true. <coughs> mm. 
in space, your nut would cause you to accelerate backwards with equal force to the forward acceleration of your nut. That is also true. But your nut is so low... It's low mass. So the force exerted in both directions would be extremely minimal. But yeah, let's say you're stuck in zero gravity. I guess you could spit, maybe. As long as you're ejecting mass in a particular direction. But yeah. These are all ways that you could potentially, like, give yourself some velocity. Yeah. You just need that, like, fire hose... ...pentages. This is a bit graphic, alright? So I'm warning. Children, just pretend you don't hear this next part. But one of my favorite things is when, like, entitled ladies get so jizzed up that it, like, <laughs> like, fires out their fingers or whatever. Like, the inside of a woman is just one big empty cavity. What? Steph didn't appreciate that description. I agree nobody needs that. I'm not saying it's a good thing. Yeah, like coming out their eyes. It's like, Jesus Christ. If... If you were to... D g provide that much volume... Then surely the gentleman would just be a skeleton. Like if, if a lady got topped up that hard. Like you know when the... When the like pump doesn't shut off automatically and it's just spraying out everywhere? The gasoline? It'd be like that. And then the guy would just be like, ah, and then fall over dead. Like that. All those random little musical strings coming in. Oh, it might be expanding like it's under pressure. Like one of those, one of those, uh, spring snakes in the little trick can. What's that? A recording? Huh. Must be the marker they dug up. So it is the same. That marker. That's the symbol of the Church of Unitology. It didn't take you for a believer, Isaac. My mother was. But if they found this on some alien planet, what does that mean? That Unitology's onto something? Unitology's full of shit. Forget it. Man, got him. Yeah, yeah, Strider. The brass and strings are used so well in this score. Boy. I wonder how, uh, I wonder if Scientologists were worried about this game. Because I... I remember some people making that comparison with the fact that there's, like, explicit ranks and a structure and, like, they've gotten a bunch of high-ranking corporate and government people in their ranks and stuff like that. Ever watch Ad Astro with Brad Pitt? I did not. I feel like maybe at the time they didn't see video games as a big thing. Yeah, maybe. I guess there's also a difference between, like... They probably just didn't think it was... That big of a deal. And it kind of isn't. It's not like a direct takedown or calling out the active pra practices of the religion today. That seems to be what they start getting litigious and weird about.
Although Elrond, Elrond Hubbard creating a religion is kind of, kind of in line with, I feel like that's kind of in line with the spirit of Dead Space's brand of science fiction. God, that's satisfying. His name was El Ron Hoya Bembe. <laughs> what is that from? <laughs> oh, you're not gonna drop an item for me? Jerk. Too good for it? Huh? Damn it. Oh, Eric Andre, okay. Unitology was literally created by the government and military. Well, I thought it was like, I mean, it was in response to the marker, right? The people who were exposed to the marker created Unitology. Am I wrong about that? I always assumed it was the, like, dark influence of the marker that caused people to kind of bond together and create, like, a coalition of power to try to bring the marker to Earth. Ended up, ended up working out that way. Okay. He's not dead. Now he's dead. Sure is easy when he got stasis. Whee. When they found the black marker, people started praising it. Michael Altman stopped it by dropping it back into the Gulf of Mexico, and the military stepped in and had him killed by a necromorph to make him a martyr so that they could officially create a religion. Ah! Huh. I did not know that was a backstory. That's kind of cool. Sometimes to me, that's the scary thing is like, is, is not only people like choosing the mind control because it gives them power or whatever, choosing the system that will obviously lead to others' down, others' downfall. But, like, then creating a system that gets other people to buy into it, even if they're not mind-controlled. Like the... Oh, man, that one episode in, um... In Andor. Light spoilers, but the one where they're, like, basically captive and assembling things. Now the Empire made, like, a whole metagame around that to distract people. No joke, that shit reminds me of TikTok. TikTok does that stuff left and right. They invent all these games and competitive leaderboard shits to get people to, like, overproduce with no incentive at all. Aside from, like, this vague, like, recognition you get from being higher on a board. 
It's so creepy. It's so messed up. And people are people are falling into it, man. They are they are eating it up, I guess. Those horns, yeah. Just watch the outlets. The grid's unstable. That's two. One more system and we'll have power for the ADS. I joined their creator Discord and it's like there's so much ridiculously like canned messaging of like, we're starting this incentive. Make sure to make a lot of videos and encourage people to leave comments and make sure to encourage them to give gifts. Everybody's going to do great. And none of it is ever you're going to get paid. Ever. TikTok weaponized data science? Kinda, yeah. Like, people complained about YouTube algorithms driving people towards extremist content. Not great, but I don't think it was an intended, an intended, uh, or a weaponized use of it. It was just kind of an unintended consequence of trying to deliver videos to people that they watched and seemed to enjoy. As, as, as indicated by data of, like, finish rates and watch time. But yeah, TikTok is more like, we don't give a flying fuck. Like, if it keeps people's attention, we'll do it. There's no concern about whether or not people are happy. There's no concern about whether or not the content being made is worth anything to anybody. It's just, you know, will people watch it? Then make it. And what systems can we construct to make people volunteer more content into the system? Yeah. It's the algorithm it knows when you linger. Yeah. The fact that, like, the fact that TikTok is short form means that it gets so much data about you so fast. About when and how you react to things. BB number nine, thanks for the sub. Wait a minute. 20 months, currently on a four month streak. A four month streak and a 20 month sub time. 420, you say? Are you telling me 420 right now? Is that what you're telling me, BB? Anyway, TikTok's creepy. I used to, I used to like multi-stream on TikTok. I should still do it, but part of me is like, I don't even, I kind of don't want to contribute to that as an ecosystem. I guess if I, if I multi-stream to TikTok, then theoretically the end result is that somebody leaves TikTok. And if only one person stops using TikTok because I'm I'm streaming on that app, then it's a win. I actively kind of want to siphon people away from that service. They're a fucking horror show. These things mold any dead tissue into a new form. One kind infects corpses, and the rest... Make more corpses to infect. That organic shit on the walls, that's dead tissue too. The crew thought it was a... Habitat changer. TikTok will put you in front of a fuck ton of people. Yep. It's true. That's the that's the frustrating thing is that a lot of apparently a lot of people use the app, so if you want to get seen by eyeballs, you have to go there, which sucks. It means that it's almost like Facebook. Facebook was pretty evil about how they owned and monetized the ability to get in front of people's eyeballs. I feel like Facebook has had many historical examples where they do the actively evil thing. We we have yet, I think, to see that from TikTok. But... I don't... I haven't seen anything from my experience as a creator for them that indicates to me that they wouldn't do the evil thing. I don't see anything philosophically that means they're interested in, like, anyone's health or even the longevity of the service. Oh, James, you work at Facebook? Well, get their money, man. Take it. I was just a little salty about them potentially dis overthrowing Western democracy. That was actually like, on, that was on the table for a while. It's still not completely off, but Facebook definitely played a role.
I'm not an avid TikTok user, but I noticed it ruined my attention span. Yeah, I feel like I kind of felt that way too. I've, like I spent a couple, just to kind of figure it out, to get the TikTok experience. And I still open the app sometimes, but I don't, I don't slip into the flicking like for hours thing that I did a couple of times. Anyway, I did find that after that, after I had like a TikTok session where I just let it feed or YouTube shorts, yeah, where I just let it feed into my brain. Just that instant gratification, and the second that I'm bored, I flip away. If I spend too long doing that, my brain really does start, like, dialing into that rhythm. And then I, I really want to just, like, opt out of any other thing. I hit that decision point, and I'm like, get it, I'm done with this. And, uh, that's not great. Like, I feel like the consuming media like that, for extended amounts of time is so unfulfilling. It gives you so little to think about. Uh oh. That music is so good. Elizabeth, it's Jacob. I came to the bridge looking for you, but it is completely fucked. I'm not sticking around in case whatever did it comes back, and neither should you. It looks like the admin staff went to the mining deck to meet up with the other survivors. I'll head there too. If you aren't with them, I'll find a way to contact you. I promise. I, uh... When I went on the cruise, something I... I want to brag about forever, but... Meatco. Mmm. On the boat, didn't really have a whole lot of internet, so it was kind of... it was nice. Not even having the option to just, like, flick through feeds for a while. I realize it's, it's, it maybe has become part of my routine. It's nice to decompress, I guess. It's nice to kind of, like, change thought modes to just let your brain go empty for a little while. But any more than that, and it... I'm usually not a big believer in wasted time if you choose to do a thing and have fun doing it. But I don't know. I feel like watching short content... Specifically TikTok. I feel like it starts feeding you just... love. Like, I've seen reels in YouTube shorts that are at least informative or, like, expose a certain idea, point of view, show a skill. Like, that's all interesting, but... TikTok videos can straight up be like a robot downloaded a clip, mixed it with another clip, put a weird sound on top of it, and that's the video. It's like... It's not even intended for human consumption, really. It's just that it has weird sounds. And no one cared- like, no one made it to be no one made it with the desire that it would enrich anyone's life. They only made it because it's distracting enough to prevent you from scrolling for four seconds. Branded content that only teenagers are already locked into the app will engage with. Yeah. Although I guess teenagers probably aren't looking for the most mental stimulation, so whatever, you know. If a, if a teenager spends an evening looking at short content, the world hasn't lost too much. And I, I doubt they'll regret that for the rest of their lives, because Lord knows I spent a lot of... A lot of... A lot of... I wasted a lot of time as a teenager. But I also played a lot of hot video games, so... Oh, this fucking hallway, look at this. Wait, auto-targeting offline. Calibration data not found. Fuck. No auto-targeting. The cannons are useless. What about manual targeting? You want to go out there with all that shit raining down and target the ADF cannons manually? If I give the cannons enough targeting data, it'll recalibrate the system. You got a better idea? Christ. I'll open exterior access. I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> But here's the thing. Here's the thing. If uh don't take don't take my grumpiness as 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 being unwilling to just accept the future. I'm I'm pretty okay with like that being the future of of content. I I assumed it would get there eventually. I think it makes sense for kids to want that kind of stuff. I think it's just like probably that. What I'm hoping is that, given enough time, that online media 
will be less about the eyeballs you reach and more about the demographics of those eyeballs. And I think to some degree that's happening right now. But like, if you're a TikTok star and you make make five million, ten million views an episode because you like you scream a lot and you smash things with hammers and then you put funny sounds everywhere. Um, and you can get your content in front of like five million babies. I guess that's that's cool, but is that the goal? I don't know. At some point I realized numbers numbers don't always mean better content and don't always mean better content creator. It just means making a particular kind of content for a particular audience of people. Oh man. Something stompy. How will AI affect streaming? That's a really good question. I am convinced that AI streamers will be good enough. I'm convinced that you can... Not only, like, you can throw an AI on top of a long play, and I think that will be good enough for a lot of people. Because I think when it comes to streams, people just want something that's good enough. And if you can have a character or a comforting personality that is streaming 24-7, that never takes a break, that's gonna win. Captain Matthias is dead. The captain's dead. The numbers say that will win. And then yeah. AI Seinfeld is like kind of a away from the airlock. That's an I feel like it's a bit of a novelty right now in the way that like like Twitch plays Pokemon. That had ridiculous viewers the first couple of days. I don't think AI Seinfeld will fall off that fast. Maybe the whole company but. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Think we just need to hold on. We'll see as time goes by. You probably should. No, stop! Oh, Goddamn fool! Feel it. I think as a as a human being, I think as a, an an individual, I maybe have the capacity to be observably human because I'm I say some weird shit sometimes. So I hope that there's something about that quality that is more valuable than the same level of comfort or gameplay from someone else. Or someone that's not even a person. That's why you're here for now. Who's to say? Who's to say? Oh. Yeah, Seinfeld has a Patreon now? Yeah, I mean, it's got to turn into money sometime, right? What would the Patreon even be for? A tool the oh, is this how this works? Aha! Uh huh! huh. See, wait, sync a tool with the cannon. Oh, wait. All right. Oh! Sinking targeting system. Oh, that's cool. Oh, E. Shit. Where's the air? Might need some... Some breathies? No, we don't do that. We don't, we don't breathe out here. Oh. Is that air? Your voice and often intellectual topics serve as both good main viewing content and nice background of ASMR of sorts. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing though. Oh, that was air? Okay. The problem with AI, and I feel like this is also reflected through TikTok, is that, let's say you have my tenor of voice, right? But with AI, you could make a clip of something similar to my voice, saying a certain thing in front of a video game, or whatever. And then you could have 1,000 permutations of that same voice with just like various audio aspects changed, various timings changed, and based on the first like one hour of TikTok feedback of how long people linger on it 
like you just get immediate feedback immediate data so to me the the thing about ai is that it will help it speeds up the natural selection of comfy content which also means the evolution is going to speed up so if you can field 40,000 streamers in a day on TikTok of just like twirling all sorts of personality knobs and visual appearance knobs and tenor of voice knobs and conversational topic knobs and you're just constantly pumping online content with with experiments you will very quickly converge on on something that can can like outperform mimic and uh be good enough i think so that's kind of the idea i think like even with with ai seinfeld right all you would have to do is like kind of correlate chat activity with with like chat or uh script conversation topics and stuff and have that be the like selection algorithm for whatever ai is writing the scripts they can lean into certain things i think the problem arises when it becomes indistinguishable yeah, we're not we're not too far away from that, I don't think. But that honestly, like that was my first thought with VTubing. People adopted that quickly, and I was like, "You want to accelerate this? Okay, sure. You want to like make people okay with having non-real avatars faster? All right, weird. Like you're speeding along the process." Because that'll make it even easier for people to like. Ah, I didn't want to do that. Hold on. I accidentally used a stasis. <clears throat> That'll make it even easier for people to form... form sustainable bonds with... non-real streamers and entertainers. What's wrong with VTubing? There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. I was just surprised that nobody saw it as like a creepy additional step towards removing the human element from... from online entertainment entirely. That was my first reaction. I was like, I was like, th this could this could be an AI character. They could all be AI. Why aren't they all AI? <laughs> and then, to me, honestly, like that's probably the real future of streaming, is having a stable of AI streamers, and then you manage them. You you would like do whatever human direction you can put into the process. You make whatever creative human decisions at the top layer to guide the AIs to behave in certain ways. Maybe you choose what games they play based off of the, uh, based off the data. You try to identify where there's like hidden market, market desires to see a particular game. So then you like, you send off your fucking streamers to play a spread of games that you hope people want to see on a given day. Or talk, talking about a variety of topics that you hope they want to talk about? I don't know. I thought about that. Like if streaming becomes uh, managing automated content generators, would I still be into it? Uh, no. I guess I could play games while I'm doing that, but then... And then like what happens when it's... God, when it's like AI streaming for AI? When even the viewership is, like, automated. Or the, like, the channels. Like, let's say the channels that get exposed to the human choice of what to watch is also decided by AI and machine learning. So you have to you have to program AI that can get through an AI choice gate to be put in front of a person. Maybe. But then there's probably going to be, like, a lot of botting. I don't know. I feel like... I feel like what's going to happen, and to some degree to me it already has, is that the things you see on the internet are in a different reality. Like, I'm sure everyone in chat is a real person, and I believe that. Oh, 420 viewers. Holy shit, perfect timing for me to make this point. Very Matrixy. Uh, but, like, all the news I see online and all that stuff, I believe it, sort of. But it's still slotted into, okay, well, it didn't happen directly in front of me. Um, and I feel like that's going to be the case too in the near future. Once AI hits a certain level and you see streamers where it's like, wow, they're, inter they're interacting and behaving very naturally. Then I feel like you won't believe anymore. Like AI and people will become the same thing as long as they're online. 
because I'm sure there will be AI bots that like fill into multiplayer matches. And after a while, people will probably even want to play games with particular bots because of their personalities and the way they play and probably even develop like weird friendships with them. So in that point, like you'll have parties of people that have like three real people and four bots or whatever, and they all have good chemistry. Um, and then for you as a human, you'll have your human life and the humans that you recognize around you because you see that they're people. But beyond that, every soul you interact with on the internet could be real or digital. And that means that also every piece of data you see, every video you see could be real, could not, because that's the, f the realm of the internet. Uh, some people kind of believe that way as a like to obscure their like trolling in a game or something like that. But that's kind of, yeah, a lot of people are already that way. Blaze, Blaze O'Meara. I already, react, I already interact with the internet like that. I think it's scary to think that the internet has no stakes because it does. It's still very real and it's still, there's still a lot of people on it. And what happens there affects the real world very directly. But I do think it's like, I think just to make sense of the world around us and the world we interact with. There, you'll have to like believe in this third dimension of reality. Where like the rules are different, but still have to, oh, ow. What? Who did that? That a... What? I can't hear anything. Oh, there you are. Jesus. God. I think there's another one? Fuck. There is another one. Yeah. Calm down. Warning. Hull integrity approaching critical. Sinking targeting system. Migration complete. ADS recalibrated. Auto targeting systems enabled. They're back. The ADS cannons are online shipwide. Thank God. Engaging autopilot. Get yourself inside, Isaac. I think I figured out our next move. Okay. That's that's a pretty cool reinterpretation of the like meteor sequence. My family is very non-internet-y, non-internet-y, excuse me. I think they don't realize how the internet and tech affect them until, until maybe way later. <sighs> yep, that's, uh, maybe, hmm. I guess it, I guess it depends for every person how they're, how they're affected by it. Exiting zero gravity. Vacuum. Yeah, my my parents are pretty detached too, but they kind of live they live a detached life. I honestly don't think the internet matters too much to them. My mom, you know, she gets on Facebook and she gets real annoyed at political extremity because she lives in she lives in rural Texas, so a lot of her social group is only one or two twigs throws away from people with very strong opinions about things. I just intercepted a transmission for medical. Someone's down there? See what you make of this. This is senior medical officer Nicole Brennan. Ooh. Medical is a sanctuary. All survivors, please join us. Nicole, I'm going back to medical. Makes sense. I'll head to the crew deck and look for survivors from the bridge. I'll be in touch. The crew deck? Wonder if you know something we don't. What are you implying? Ah! 
Oh no! No! Absolutely not! These assholes! No! Uh-uh! Uh. Uh. Damn it. Doesn't the little head, like, crawl on you and burrow into your neck and become your new head? I Yes. Be gone! Yeah, I was missing that flamethrower. <sighs> yeah, you just keep shambling on. Ugh, man, such a such an awesome death, death animation. <sighs> Unfortunately, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna end the stream there tonight. Nice eight and a half hour stream. Hmm. But that's gonna be it for me. I'm. I'm pretty. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go make some dinner. I'm gonna go cook some dinner. I'm gonna do the human act of cooking food. I'm gonna saute some broccoli. And who know who knows what else I'm gonna get up to? But thank you all very much for watching. Had a great stream today. Finished uh, high. I want to call it Lo-Fi Rush. Finished Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, excited. To, I'm probably gonna play through that game again. But uh, that's checked off the list for now. I'm gonna get back to Yakuza Zero this week. Next week it's Saturday. Let me see what's going on. Are there any like hot releases? Cause yeah, I need to get back to Yakuza Zero. Need to keep playing Armored Core. Eh, I'm not really interested in Hogwarts, so... Eh. Uh, and then... Yeah, the Episode 3 fighting game. It's good stuff. Lots of good video games. And then Forspoken. I want to play more of that. So, Alright, thanks again for watching. Uh, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody.